Welcome to Daily Armor. Our verse today will be found in the book of Psalms, chapter 78, and we'll be looking at verse number 6. Psalm 78 and looking at verse number 6. I was in Psalm 78 yesterday, uh, but I just kept reading this chapter, and there's just like so many, so many wonderful things. Um, but this one particular thing just kept standing out to me, and I pondered on it uh, all last night. First thing that I'm thinking about when I woke up this morning and ju just brainstormed some ideas of how I'm not just only going to hear his word, but to apply his word. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more in just a minute. But I'm really going to be focusing on the first eight verses of Psalm 78. But verse number six is kind of that key verse. Um, and we'll look at verse number six. And it says that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. So this is talking about teaching the children some lessons that they're going to in turn teach their children and their children and their children. And that's what, as Christian parents, we all desire. We all want for our children to know and then for them to take that information and tell their children and their children and their children. Whenever we think about uh, raising up our children in church, um, and then we think about that as they grow and as they, um, you know, get married and have children, that the church growth should be growing so much from within the church, from the families um, that um, create more families and more families and more families. And I just think how exciting it is to see that take place, uh, where you have a family, say if you had a family that had two children and those two children married and stayed in church and then they had more children and they had, more, I mean, you're just seeing the church grow um, and be excited and sharing that from one generation to the next. And that's something that, um, that I experienced back home in North Carolina, seeing at our home church that there was, you know, grandparents and parents and grandchildren and everybody kind of, you know, they're just growing and growing and growing and not, you know, not that, that some didn't, you know, move off to different locations and things like that, but that for the most part, you're seeing the growth from within and it's so beautiful to see that and how important it is to share with our children what the Lord has done. And I really want to, I want to read the first eight verses and kind of get a better picture of what I'm, um, what I'm just just so excited about this morning but verse number one says give ear O my people to my law incline your ears to the words of my mouth this is very important number two verse two says i will open my mouth in a parable i will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us so this is things they've heard and this is things they've experienced Verse number four again says, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. What are we going to tell the generation to come? We're going to tell them how wonderful the Lord is, how mighty, how powerful, all the things that he's done, all the things that he's able to do, which is anything that he wants to do. The Lord is, is he has no limits, uh, but our, you know, our doubts and our fears is, is the only limitations um, that we we limit what he wants to do because of our unbelief, because of our um, our fears. And we just want to, we want to remind the children who their faith, if we had the faith of the children, we would be thinking way beyond what is possible and looking to those things that are impossible because that's the God that we serve. And when we tell them that's the God that they'll serve, I pray that, that, that we do that, that we teach our children in such a manner, in such a way that we reflect such an example that they put no limits on what the Lord can do because he has no limits. I um, want to continue on in this verse four again. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. It's all about what God has done. Verse number five, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known in their children. He's saying, we've told, the Lord has told us to tell our children. The Lord has told us to rehearse these things in their ears, to tell them about it, not just one time, 
but over and over and over again so they, they don't forget and so they can remember how to tell their children. Verse number six, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God. That's why this verse number seven is why we're to do this thing. The Lord is saying that they might set their hope in God. In other words, so they can trust him, so they can know him, so they can so they can think about him and know that, that all that's around them is, is of the Lord, that he created the heaven and the earth. And he, he made the day and the night and the sea and the animals and the people and that he made me and he made you. And get them excited that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. That's what, that is so important. The Lord has said that in the word over and over again. Um, back when, if you look in the Old Testament with the, the children of Israel wandering um, around in the wilderness, and it says, and they forget God. They, they got consumed with the circumstances in front of them that they forgot all the wonderful things that he done behind them in their past. He parted the Red Sea. They, they, and not only did he part and hold the waters back, they walked over on dry land. The land that they, I mean, the waters parted and they're walking on dry ground and the enemy comes up behind them. And what happens? He makes the waters to go back upon the, and the enemy and he takes care of the enemy. And he did that wonderful thing. And every time they come to a new obstacle, the Lord wanted them to remember what he'd done in the past so that when they get to this new obstacle, that they wouldn't panic and they wouldn't worry and they wouldn't be scared, but they would be excited to see what the Lord was going to do. But so many times as we get older and older and older, it seems like we want to forget all those things. But the Lord wants us to remember. He wants us to remember because that's where our hope is. Our hope is in God. Our hope is in what he has done. He's proved to us from in times past what he is able to do, what he can do, which is everything, which is anything, and what he's willing to do, which is marvelous things. And that when we come to these next obstacles, that we will remember and that will move us forward instead of, you know, wrap, instead of stunning us, instead of shocking us into fear where we're not movable, where we're not workable, where we're, um, we're not usable um, because we won't, we won't make a move forward. Um, and let's continue on. I just love that. Let me read that again in verse number seven, that they might set their hope in God. That's so wonderful. And not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. He wants us to obey. He wants us to, to love those enemies. He wants us to, um, to love our brethren. He, there's so many things that he wants us to do. And when we put it into practice, when we, when we do what he says, when we move forward, when he says to move forward, when he says, wait on the Lord. And there's so many times when he wants us to wait, when he says, wait on the Lord, we're to stop and wait and just ponder on him, remember those wonderful things he's done so that we're ready when he's ready for us to move forward. Verse number eight says, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. We don't want to be that. And we don't want our children to be that. And the way that we help our children to not be that stubborn and the, what did it say here? That stubborn and rebellious generation is to tell them the wonderful things that God has done. Um, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's the generation he's talking about that he wants the future children to not become that. He wants them to remember the wonderful things he's done. We need to remember the wonderful things we, that he has done. We don't need to be that stubborn generation. We don't need to be that rebellious generation. We don't need to be that bad example for our children um, and how we're just, we're not expecting anything of the Lord, um, but we're that one who is remembering what all he's done, not just what, the, what his word says and what his word has in here is so wonderful. What his words got for us is so, so wonderful, but also what he's done personally in our life. Um, it, the, the day that, that I was saved was a, a, a life transformation, a life transforming, tra life transforming, I can't even speak, life transforming 
experience for me. And he's done so many things along the way. If you remember um, several weeks ago, I challenged us to keep a memory book to write um, as a memorial to the Lord, write in a book so that we can remember. And when we remember, we share that and we teach that. We teach that from his word. We share our personal experiences. Our personal testimony is so powerful. And it's not just powerful to other adults, but those children that are listening and those children that are watching, our actions and our reactions and our praise and our worship, it's, it's, it can be the difference of them putting their hope in God or them being a rebellious and a stubborn generation or not. And so let's teach the children. Let's be a good example in front of them. Let's every time um, that we have an opportunity, let's get involved with them knowing about all the wonderful things that he's done and let them know that this is not a fairy tale. This is truth. This are real accounts and and share that with the next generation and then they'll share that with the next generation and that'll just keep going on and on and on. And I'm just, I just praise the Lord this morning because he is so wonderful and I can, I'm excited. If you really read um, and I probably challenged us this yesterday, um, and that's what I did. I really was diving in there deep into this Psalm 78. If you look at just the accounts, just the wonderful miracles, that, that look in verse number 12, it says, Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. These are things that these same people that turned their back on the Lord, these same people that would for, was forgetting, these are the people who experienced, who walked, through onto that dry ground in, in the middle of the Red Sea that saw those waters parted. They saw these marvelous things to marvel. To they, These are things that, that were so marvelous and they were so awesome and they were so amazing that it was hard to even contain um, the, the your reaction because it was just, uh, it was beyond comprehension. And they were, they were witnesses. This was done in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. And in verse number 13, it says he divided the sea and it just keeps on and on. He led them. There was the cloud, there was the fire, there was the water coming from the rock. And if you just, if you just keep reading on, you're, you're just witnessing and you're, you can share this marvelous work, that marvelous work, this marvelous work. These are things God has done. And these are experiences that these people have witnessed, they saw it, and they were to share it with their children, and then their children were going to share it with their children. And that's what we do. We share in his word the marvelous thing he's done, uh, and he's done so many, and there's so many um, accounts that we can tell, but then also share those personal things that he has done for me and that he has done for you. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.